In this video, we're going to explore the difference between digital and analog signals. You'll encounter both types when working with electronic components, and understanding them is key to proper diagnostic and system design. On the left, you can see the digital signal. A digital signal has only two states, on and off. These states are often represented by voltages. In this example, the off state is 0 volts, and the on state is 3.3 volts. Digital signals are binary in nature. They switch between these two defined levels with no intermediate value, so you won't see 1.5 volts or anything in between as a valid state in this example. It's either all or nothing. Digital signals are perfect for systems that need precise control, like computers, because they're easy to interpret. Is the signal on or off? Simple. However, the exact voltage levels for on and off can vary between systems. For example, some systems use 5 volts or higher as on, but the important concept is that the signal remains binary. Now let's look at the signal on the right. This is an analog signal. Unlike the digital signal, an analog signal can take on an infinite number of states. It's continuous, meaning the voltage can be any value within a range. The signal might be 0 volts, 1.5 volts, or 3.3 volts at any given time. It's not limited to just on or off. Analog signals are often used in sensors or audio where subtle variations are important. For example, the voltage might represent temperature, light intensity, or sound, and the signal varies smoothly over time. You can think of an analog signal as moving up and down like a sine wave, capturing all the values in between. Let's compare these two signals side by side. The digital signal is either on or off with no middle ground. In our case, off is 0 volts, and on is 3.3 volts, but the voltage range could change depending on the system. On the other hand, an analog signal can represent any value within a range. In this example, it could be 0 volts, 1.5 volts, 3.3 volts, or even much higher depending on the system. Some analog signals might go as high as 12 volts, or even 120 volts in certain applications. The key takeaway is that digital signals are discrete, with defined high and low states, while analog signals are continuous, capturing many possible values between high and low. Why might we choose a digital signal over an analog one? Precision. Digital signals are less sensitive to changes in voltage, noise, or interference. For instance, even if the voltage source drops slightly, a digital system can still accurately determine whether the signal is on or off. Many digital systems are designed to interpret a range of voltages as on or off. For example, if the on voltage is supposed to be 3.3 volts, a system might still recognize 2.5 volts as on, depending on its tolerances. Tolerance helps maintain reliability. In contrast, an analog signal can be more affected by small changes in voltage. If the source voltage fluctuates, the analog signal could be distorted, making it harder to interpret accurately. Another reason to use digital signals is that computers naturally work with binary data. Computers interpret everything as a series of zeros and ones where 0 is off and 1 is on. This makes digital signals a perfect match for computer processing. An analog signal, on the other hand, has to be converted into a digital signal, using something called an analog-to-digital converter, so that the computer can understand it. This extra step can sometimes introduce delays or inaccuracies. In our upcoming lessons, we'll dive deeper into both digital and analog components, examining how they interact with the CPU, and exploring the benefits and drawbacks of each. We'll look at real-world examples of components, 
that use these signals and how they communicate with the systems around them. For further reading, I've included URLs in the description. They cover analog and digital signals in more detail and can help clarify any points you might still have questions about.